guys, this girl got game. Welcome to the silence. That is Eric's first bad ending. Um, I was originally going to pick a different trainer in this while doing bad endings because I realized I've, I don't really have enough roots to do all the trainers, but I'm not going to do it in Eric's because um, I don't make it to the castle <laughs> by, by reaching either of these endings. And I'd like to see like what the trainers teach her to do to get to the castle each time. So I won't do it here. I might try with some of the future guys, depending on where their bad ends are. Otherwise, I'll do like a separate video on those. So I'm just going to stick with Shadow, and otherwise we're just going to pick the options that my notes say will lead us to bad ending number one, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but first, what I wanted to do was look at Grandfather's Journal, because I didn't do that last time, and I'd like to see what that has to do. Let's look at Grandfather's Journal. I decided to look through Grandfather's Journal. Maybe he had something he wanted to show me. I wasn't entirely sure why I was doing this in the first place. I opened his journal and scanned my eyes across each page I flipped through. He had so many notes, it was hard to fathom him knowing so much about everything he wrote. He was smart, though, so it wasn't entirely surprising. One section, however, made me stop and read in depth. Demon children. Well, that would have been useful. On the page was a badly drawn sketch of a humanoid creature I had to assume was demon. From the size, it could have been a child. However, I wasn't entirely sure. Apparently, there were multiple demon races, not just incubi and succubi. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of different demon types, and each had their own methods on how they bred to produce children. Hmm. Demons of Lilith were the most human-like in terms of pregnancy. They bear the child for a set amount of time, and the delivery, paired with magic, was seamless and painless. However, as soon as a demon is born, the parents imbue their child's demon name into their souls. It seemed so confusing at first glance, but as I read further, I became more and more intrigued about demons and their children. Demon mothers, regardless of race, had to bear enough energy for both the mother and the child. This, along with a host of other reasons, were why females were the dominant gender in the Abyssal Plains. However, if a demon bearing a child didn't have enough energy, her child would absorb the last of it and kill off the mother in an attempt to sustain itself. I swallowed thickly. Was energy that important to demons? How could a child even do that to their mother? They'd die off too. One thing was explicitly mentioned, however. Unlike humans, demons form souls in the womb, making them living beings while still forming in their mother's body. They become sentient as soon as they are conceived. It was strange to think about. Demon babies were aware that they were alive before they were born? It was intriguing. <laughs> and there's Aurabelle. Okay, so let's skip a bit. Skipping and dancing in the moonlight. Okay, this time I don't tell him about the child. Forget about it. Ah, forget about it. If he couldn't see it, then it had to be something I just imagined. I smiled and nodded to Eric. Yeah, I figured, why not? I couldn't sleep and dancing is always a good way to burn off energy, right? Eric smiled and nodded, leaning in and kissing my forehead. It was a white lie, but he wouldn't have believed me anyway. Oh, Angel. All right, let's see. Okay, we can skip again. I think this might be... Yeah, so no fun times this time. As always, this seems to affect an ending. I shook my head. I didn't want to ruin the romantic moment with sex and barf. As much as it was, um, you know, good, amazing and good and stuff, it was not something that needed to be done every time we shared a moment together. Gosh. Besides, I was tired. Probably have a headache, too. I just wanted to get some sleep and let the moment we had shared resonate in our memories. Eric led me back to our room and we both got comfy together in bed, ready for sleep. He nuzzled my forehead with his before pressing a kiss to it. I kissed him back before allowing my body to rest. I drowned in the warmth Eric's body gave me as I drifted off to dreamland. Okay, and then skip again the next option oh right that horrible dream 
And then this. Getting ready. Getting transported. Oh, okay. This is just... Instead of crying, I'm going to stay still, which I've done it before. Forgot about that. Okay, so that's fine. Um, Alright, so I'm going to go find Shadow and stuff, and I'll bring you in at the next choice then, guys. Okay, so we got a new option to pick finally, after all that hubbub. Eric has finally found us here in the Abyssal Plains, and this time... Instead of kissing him, I just need to keep holding him. Okay, and then otherwise, someone told me I should pick the curse instead of the trap, so I'm gonna do that now as well. Sacrifice somebody. <laughs> Gotta get them achievements. An eye for an eye achievement unlocked. Alright, I got that. Everyone in the room looked at me in surprise as I finally spoke up. The demon lord had trapped me here with the blood of a thousand demons. It was only fair to trap him with a life of just one. Will the curse work with just one life? Yes. He won't be able to escape. Because of its dark magic. Are you sure this is the best choice? A monster like him won't stop if we box him in. We have to ensure that he won't be able to do anything while we prepare to fight back. Everyone nodded, most in reluctance, while the others did with confidence. Diana, however, turned to the orc man with a stern face. As for your reluctance, Sir Brute, we won't be using one of your men. Well then, who would you use? At that moment, Diana smirked, sending a familiar shiver down my spine. For a split second, I swore I saw a flash of gold cross her visible eye, she replied to Matthew. A little mongrel who had the nerve to electrocute me in my own castle. Who? What? I stared. There really was an imp in the castle? Oh yeah, right. I remember that now. However, my mind released the question to focus on Diana's smirk. Something was off about Diana and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. When I came to the demon world, I had barely recognized her and didn't expect her kindness. Now, as I was staring at her at that moment, I again recognized the woman who had attacked me in the human world. And then she snapped out of it. Okay, so let's see. Where... Where am I going? Uh, ba 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 Um, okay. Well, only a couple of options. You guys might as well stick around. I'll skip. Uh, I'll pick that. I picked that last time. Do, 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 do. Oh, right. Of course, now the uh, we're doing the curse instead of the trap, so this is a little bit different. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to head for the Demon Lord's castle. Do you plan to shadow travel? Hey. No, I have another method. Don't worry. I'll be back by morning. Diana looked at Faye and nodded to them as they pressed their lips together in a tight line. Faye, please escort our guests to the remaining open rooms while I'm gone. All right. Seto. Yes, my lady. Sarah walked towards Diana and followed her out of the room. The other demons, however, looked toward us. I'll take you to your rooms then. Thank you. We truly appreciate it. Thanks, Faye. My mind for a moment wandered to Diana and remembered her almost evil smirk when we decided to perform the curse. What was she planning to do? Hopefully nothing truly sadistic. Just a wee bit. Okay, then we'll skip again. Hug him tightly. Okay, and then we got some new options after this. Instead of I was never disgusted by you, I was never in control. It was true. I didn't have any control of myself. It was almost cringeworthy remembering the horrible things I said to him. This new freedom was a blessing. Okay, that's that. Um, right, now we have to wait for Aurabelle. And say, he's my fiancé. That's right. I was getting married to him. I couldn't be so cruel to him. I had a reason why I was going to be his wife. Just because you're marrying him doesn't mean he's not icky. 
Oh, the icky thing again. Okay. Skipping? Are you okay? Yes, I am. Alright. And then... Oh, I gotta have Eric explain everything to everybody. <laughs> when we're talking about being pregnant and stuff. Eat your food. I didn't want to be the one to explain. I decided to make Eric be the one to talk by sticking a piece of fruit in my mouth. To my surprise, the fruit was absolutely delicious, and I closed my eyes and absorbed myself in enjoying the taste, like a selfish person. As if Eric knew what I had intended, he cleared his throat and began to explain. Well, it would seem that my princess has a bit of a visitor. A visitor? What do you mean? <laughs> Matthew's face. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, are you saying that- You're pregnant? <laughs> yeah, it's just visiting for now. It'll leave one day. <coughs> <coughs> the shock of the question jammed the piece of fruit that was melting in my mouth down the wrong tube, but luckily my coughing shot it back out. I covered my mouth and swallowed the fruit piece before glaring at the group. No! How could I have been pregnant? Sure, there were moments where we could have conceived a child, but I didn't want kids yet. Besides, now is not the time or place to imagine me being pregnant. Hmm. I looked to Eric, completely red in the face, and noticed that he was laughing in response. For a moment, I wondered what he was thinking. Is having a child that bad? Absolutely. Okay, so she's back. So... Okay, we got a lot to do. Mostly with Shadow. So I could, I'm gonna skip that, and I will bring you back in at the new choice, guys. Okay, so this time I'm going to ask, do you want me to be pregnant? Uh, some people said that I should have picked that in the good ending, but this walkthrough actually mentions it specifically for here in the bad ending. I don't know if it actually influences things either way, but I want to pick it anyway. So I will. Eric. Yes, my princess? Do you want me to be pregnant? I had to know. He reacted so violently towards the spirit at the mention of children. Eric's face, however, contorted from the concern it melted into to a look of confusion. Where is this coming from? I just want to know. Eric sighed and nodded, making a small lump in my th stomach harden. He really wanted me to be pregnant? Before I could speak, though, Eric raised his head with a kind and soft smile. I would be happy to have you bear my children and for you to be a wonderful mother, but not unless you want to. You would be the one bearing the burden the longest. My heart skipped multiple beats. I was shocked at his words. Eric continued. In the demon world, it is a regular occurrence for incubi and succubi to breed as often as possible. It's only natural that I'd want children, princess. However, you are a human, and even more so, you are the one I love. I obey your every command. Wow. Before my eyes, Eric slowly wrapped his arms around my form and kissed my forehead. The warmth of his embrace made my entire body melt, but I wrapped my arms around him in return. We're not even married yet. We can probably wait until after we say our vows before we think about children. <laughs> probably. <laughs> A small laugh erupted from me as I nuzzled Eric's chest. He was right. We didn't have to think about it now. I shouldn't have let the idea get to me. And that's why I didn't pick it the first time. Right. <laughs> okay, so there's that. I picked that. It didn't really affect things too much. Uh, let's see. So. Just a couple of options. Where is... Okay. It's actually quite a while away, so I'll bring you guys in at the next choice. Okay, we're getting to the end of this ending, I think, as long as I've done things correctly. Um, we only have a couple more options. So we found out about the uh, planned mutiny, and this time... What was the last thing you heard? I will say, I don't remember. The group raised their eyebrows in unison at me, unconvinced. Okay, then I have to believe in Diana, and then 
So we only had one fun time this time around while I was doing all those options. The next time I'm not, I'm just gonna go to sleep before the big battle. So we'll see what happens. Skipping, skipping, skipping. I believe in Diana. We're gonna lose our memory. And then we're gonna sleep. All right, let's see what happens. Eek! We would survive. We'd be okay. I felt safe in Eric's arms and I'm sure he felt safe in mine. We would return to the human world and be okay. Eric kissed my forehead, feeling my exhaustion, and we tucked ourselves in, wrapping each other in our arms and escaping one last time to the darkness of slumber. Tomorrow we'll decide everything. Maybe we do make it to the castle. Oh. All right. So, so she does her speech. A pair of guards rushed forward, carrying a flailing imp demon who was caught in chains and forcefully slammed him down in front of Diana. She glared down at him and gripped one of his horns, pulling him to his knees. You should be thankful we didn't throw you into a stew like we did your partner. Yeah. Oh. With that whisper, Diana dragged her nails across the imp's neck, slicing open five large gashes in his throat and making him garble out a painful, bubbly cry. Diana, however, kept holding his head up, focusing on the blood uh, that poured from him and guiding the energy that emanated from it towards the castle. With a flash, a large purple and red orb barrier that surrounded the castle shattered, fading into the air. The barrier that held the demon lord at bay was finally open, allowing us to charge in and end this once and for all. Skipping again. So we do our stuff. Fight's happening. Okay. And then Orabel shows up. When does the bad ending happen? Oh. I shouldn't have got this far. Diana! Might as well pick a different option, I guess. I stood there, lost in what was happening. When she reached her, Orabel grabbed hold of Diana's throat and lifted her, making Diana choke and flail her legs in the air. Say sorry with your life. Oh. Eric and I became witness to Orabel crushing Diana's throat. I could barely hear her cries as the snapping of her neck echoed through the hall. Diana! As Orabel let her body drop to the floor, Diana's corpse made a painful thud echo through the room behind my scream. However, Orabel then turned her head to look at me and Eric. Okay. I prepared to defend myself. I became ready for the attack. But my vision became blocked by the back of Eric's head. <laughs> oh no! No! I wasn't prepared. I thought, maybe I hecked up, and we could still have a happily ever after. Nope. Eric! Sticking out of Eric's back was the Demon Lord's blade. It was run through his chest towards me, barely inches away from my own chest. Eric, impaled, twitched as he stared down at the sword's blade. My heart began to cry and scream. This couldn't have been happening. No! Orabel quickly pulled the blade back out and sheathed it back into Eric's body, as if she wanted to be sure that she had killed him. I barely heard his last breath of life. No! I became so absorbed in the sound of my scream that I couldn't register Orabel pull out the blade and stepping around Eric running it through my neck. Oh, thank goodness at least I died soon after. You hurt me? Now I'll hurt you. Ugh. Okay, I'm kind of relieved. <laughs> At least I didn't have to live with it. That was not as traumatizing as James's bad ending for me. I didn't have to cry as much. I'm just like, oh crap. Not again. <laughs> Eric! We died together. We all, all three of us died there. Welp. Okay. That was an ending, I guess. <sighs> well, thank you guys for joining me with for that question mark <laughs> hopefully that wasn't too bad for you guys okay so that ended up working i guess we'll uh 
see what bad end number two has in store for us then. Uh, hopefully I'll see you there. Okay, until then, I'll see you next time.